Groundbreaking evidence released in the investigation into what really happened the night 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was shot by neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman. It's the case that sparked widespread outrage across the country, igniting racial tension and massive protests. ABC's Matt Gutman has been closely following this story, and now he brings us the latest from Sanford, Florida. Tonight, the very first video ever seen of Trayvon Martin, February 26, the night he was fatally shot in Sanford, Florida. Here he's in the 7-Eleven where he would buy candy, Skittles and iced tea, wearing the hoodie that would become a symbol of his death, triggering marches and memorials. A death that tonight is becoming increasingly complex. Just hours ago, a document dumped by the prosecution seeking a second degree murder charge against George Zimmerman. Hundreds of pages of documents, pictures, audio and video. In them, a different portrait of the 28 year old neighborhood watchman who shot Martin that fateful night. Justin! Now! Justin! Now! The shooting set off a national firestorm. It appeared Zimmerman attacked Martin taking the law into his own hands and killing an innocent black teenager motivated by racial malice. Meanwhile, Zimmerman, who was half Hispanic, claimed he was in a life and death struggle with Martin that night and that the single shot was in self-defense. We now know Zimmerman was arrested at gunpoint and here clear pictures of George Zimmerman taken at the police station just moments after the shooting. The back of his head cut and bleeding in a squad car here, his battered nose already swelling, bloody. A doctor's report first obtained by ABC News diagnosed Zimmerman with a closed fracture broken nose. One witness tells police he saw Martin astride Zimmerman pummeling him, mixed martial arts style, and a paramedic reported several injuries. Uh, he had some abrasions on his forehead. He had a kind of like a deformity on the nose, kind of big and swollen. He had some abrasions on his cheeks and his face. And the documents show Zimmerman did not require stitches, did not suffer a concussion, and declined to go to the hospital on multiple occasions, saying he thought he'd be okay. But tonight, a key question remains. No one witnessed Zimmerman shoot or what sparked that fateful fight. The witness accounts, the police accounts from these documents pretty clearly demonstrate that there was an altercation, that George Zimmerman was injured. The night of the shooting, Zimmerman spotted Martin in his neighborhood and called the police. This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. But then he follows him and leaves his vehicle. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. You can hear the breaths he takes following him. About 90 seconds later, these 911 calls. Oh, there's just someone screaming outside. A guy yelling help. Oh my God. Hurry up, they're right outside my house. The residents reporting these chilling howls, raising another key issue. Who was calling for help that night? Police determined these howls to be those of Zimmerman, who apparently shouted up to 14 times in a 38 second span, according to an investigator. And another point of particular contention, the investigator says, I asked Mr. Martin if the voice calling for help was that of his son. Mr. Martin quietly responded no. But Martin family lawyer, Ben Crump, who spoke to us tonight, says that's not the case. When he listened to that tape, undistorted, in the mayor's office, in the city manager's office, he broke down and cried like a baby hearing his son break out for help before he was shot and killed. The Sanford Police Department was criticized after the shooting, not testing Zimmerman for drugs or alcohol, apparently not knowing that he was on Adderall, failing to ask questions if they knew Martin who was living just down the block and initially sending narcotics investigators to a homicide. So which side does this trove of information benefit? There's a lot in these documents that seems to help George Zimmerman's defense team. But let's remember, Trayvon Martin was still shot and killed by George Zimmerman. And so even if Zimmerman was on his back, even if he was losing a fight, he still has a lot of explaining to do and is going to have to prove that Trayvon Martin was the initial aggressor. As for Martin, we learned tonight he was slightly better built than previously thought and had THC or marijuana in his system the night he was shot. Experts tell us likely from using the drug a few days prior. We also learned that the bullet that killed Trayvon Martin was a single shot fired from less than 18 inches away. So this was not a contact shot. This was not a shot from a large distance. Uh, this would argue that it was uh, a firing during a struggle. 
uh, and it's very consistent with Mr. Zimmerman's story. I suspect this is going to be difficult for the prosecution uh, to show that this was a deliberate firing because it was not at long range. Today's documents show that the lead investigator called the shooting, quote, avoidable had Zimmerman remained in his vehicle and awaited the arrival of law enforcement. And finally, one last tragic note from the documents, the shooting that shattered two families and ripped open a gaping wound in the racial fabric of the country, according to a witness, may have just been seconds from being prevented. When I saw the police arrive, and they were literally like five seconds too late. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Sanford, Florida. Our thanks to Matt Gutman for his continued reporting on the case. GMA will have much more in the morning.